All right, let's go over to uh, this place here. The gift shop. You need headphones? <sighs> I know you're hiding something. What? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I just found out it was a week ago. Oh, <laughs> thanks. You're welcome. I'm sure you received wonderful presents. For example, your date of birth used as the combination for Dunn's safe. <laughs> My goodness. I... I can't talk here. My shift is over in ten minutes. Can you wait a while? Sure. Can I get a refill over here, Mary? Coming right up. Okay, so we hit a soft spot with that. Mary Purnell, the angel Joe Dunn found in his gold pillars. We'd been seeing each other for almost two years. It all started with, well, weekdays I start cleaning the gym at dawn, before my shift at the diner. Joey always came in early. Just a little after I got there. He used to say it was the best time for the worst task of the day. Oh, I know exactly what he meant. Did he help you clean? No, poor Joey. I would never have allowed that. He did more than enough, would even clean on my days off. Paperwork. He just hated it. But that was just him. Instead of putting off the things he couldn't stand, he did them as soon as possible. One morning, he saw me crying. I was having a rough day and... <sighs> you were pretending he tried to cheer you up? He tried to make you smile. He pointed at the coffee machine. You need a cup of joe and some fresh air. That was the first of many cups on the rooftop. And Dunn seduced you? Which is where Dunn seduced you. That word is a bit too much, Mr. Glass. <laughs> you might be too young to understand this, but real love has little to do with seduction. One day, we realized those rooftop coffees were the best part of our day. So we began to spend more time together. But you never told anyone. Why the secret? Why did you keep it secret? For Sonia's sake. She and Joey drifted apart after her mother's death. He was afraid that our relationship would only make matters worse. Until one day, on the rooftop, we realized just how serious our relationship was. And we decided to turn those moments into a lifetime. He gave me the wedding ring and we decided to tell the world he said he needed to share that happiness with his little girl. Turns out, he wasn't that happy after all. What about you? How did you feel about telling Sonia? Maybe you already noticed, I, I have a slight cold. I really should be heading home. Thanks for sharing all that with me. Take care. I lost my scarf a while back, not sure where. And now, if you'll excuse me, that's my bus stop. A pleasure to speak with you, Mr. Black. Right.
What was that? There is a cold. Are there any combinations we can make? Okay. Is there any, if we go this way, will it take us anywhere? No. Okay. What if we hop in the car? I prefer a yellow Cadillac, but I can't complain. Okay, never mind. Found in 1943. You opened it during the war? That's odd. Okay. I once shredded a bag like that, just out of pure rage. I can see that uh, shreds now. All right, where else are we supposed to go? I'm assuming we go back up and talk to the girl, to Sonya. Did you find anything interesting in those papers? No. Investigation work takes time, as I'm sure you know. I guess we can go to the roof. I don't know what we're gonna find there. a rope hanging from up here what's this those are the boards that weekly use This is where they had their morning coffees together. Uh, next. Nope, look at the, that. There's a thing on the table. Hmm. The one day on the rooftop we realized just how serious the relationship was. Back downstairs, I guess. Mm. 
Maybe there's something in the room. Here. No. Not there. There. Oh wait, you can look out the window. Dunn's room had quite a view. <laughs> There's another card. I really don't know right now. Maybe we can chat with this guy, see if he has any leads. Did you know Joe Dunn had a gun in his safe? No way, man. He hated firearms. Although... When Bobby Yale was a teenager, he went through a crazy phase. Even dropped out of the gym and joined the gang. Nothing serious. Early one morning, he broke in the gym. Joe was already here and caught him red-handed. Bobby pointed the gun at Dunn and ordered him to open the safe. So, Joe opened it and asked Bobby to put the gun aside, leave the gang, and start boxing again. I got here five minutes later and found Bobby crying like a baby in Joe's arms. <laughs> then he just stood up and put on his gloves. Yells gun and done safe. Okay. Huh. I found an empty wine bottle on the rooftop. Did Joe Dunn drink? Uh, only for a while, back when his wife died. But eventually he quit. After that, he'd only drink on special occasions. Okay. Keep training. Can we open up this one? Ah, okay. I thought I was going to look at this stuff. This is this. Hmm. Oh, it says a full suit. Oh, God. Hmm. Jake, give me one good reason not to smash it in your face. What the hell are you doing in my locker? I didn't realize it was yours. A detective. I'm a detective. That's what I do. Yeah, and my friend too. But that's what I thought. Get off me. Sometimes, John, I can just punch you. Thinks anger. Man. Make a new deduction. All right, let's see. Buffalo that works for O'Leary wears shamrock on his left. There's another one. He works for O'Leary. Why do you have that pin, Jake? What mess are you in? Dick won't say he works for a Leary. Can we ask him again? Or ask him about it? Okay, Jake. I told you! Desmond O'Leary. Huh? I know you work for him. Now you're just making stuff up. Why would you say that? We saw it. I saw the shamrock in your locker. I know what it means. Okay. Let's say you're right. So what? What are you gonna do, huh? Nothing, you're my friend. We're pals. I won't do a thing. But please, tell me the truth. Okay, I, I guess I should have said something. Business isn't going that well lately. Natalia was my last well-paying job. And it's been a while. Then, O'Leary shows up and offers me a, 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 a bodyguard contract. What was I supposed to do? 
I get it. Yeah, I understand. Seriously, you don't seem like the type to accept uh, shady offers. Or said yes. Yeah. I'd never take a job like that. As a matter of fact, I turned one down today. But that's just me. I'm no one to judge. Hey, uh, O'Leary might run an illegal gambling operation, but it's not like he's killing people or conning widows. And I, I'm just a bodyguard. I make sure no one gets hurt. What I do, Nobody including gets my hurt. contract and paycheck, is 100% legal. How bad can that be? Fair enough. But he's paying you with dirty money. O'Leary pays you with dirty money, and you're part of a criminal organization. There's no two ways about it. But that's not what bothers me. I know you're covering up O'Leary's role in Joe Dunn's death. Huh? O'Leary? No way. I mean, I don't think so. Jake, please. Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it now. I was here the day Dunn died. Go on. I had to take care of some business for O'Leary. He makes me wear the shamrock when I work for him. As you know, I left the damn thing in my locker. Say no more. You came in the back door. How did you... Yeah, that's it. Joe had mentioned he'd been painting that afternoon, but I forgot. I was painting in the gym when he died. I stopped in my tracks when I saw him screaming bloody murder at Bobby Hill. At the top of the scaffold. What was he saying? What exactly was he saying? Uh, something like, uh, if you do that, I'll call off the fight and make sure you never set foot in this gym again. I didn't want the. Yeah, a good memory for that. So I left. Jake, why didn't you tell me? I thought you'd be pissed off. Well, you were wrong. I'm sorry, John. I, I should have said something. I'll make mistakes. Don't worry. We all make mistakes. Time to go. I need to think about everything you just told me. Thanks, John. Nice. Alright, so he's reasonable when you try and talk to him. Let's see if I can go chat with Sonya now. Still looking at those papers. Did you find anything interesting in those papers? No. Investigation work takes time, as I'm sure you know. You're not very good at this. It takes you that long to, to look at the papers. Can you make any conclusions? If you do this, yeah. No. Okay. Go ask the dude in the back. Maybe he's awake now. Uh, let's call Weekly or whoever. The rhinoceros wife? Let's see. Black sat here. Please don't tell me my husband. You have nothing to worry about, Mrs. Colbert. Do me a favor and enjoy your family. Oh, thank God. Thank you, Mrs. Black Kept your word and lied to her. Oh, man. 
All right, Chief Officer. Let's see if we can get any info info from him. Hey, it's me again. Thing is, Joe Dunn's daughter hired me. All right, thanks, Joe. But I still don't get it. Any signs of foul play? He had no reason to. I just don't get why this guy would hang himself. Yeah. The gym wasn't making him rich, but one of his pupils was on the rise. Headed straight for Madison Square Garden. Well, there's more to life than business. We all have dark secrets, John. Am I right? So, are you going to help me? Why should I? <laughs> anyway, I'm afraid I don't have anything useful this year. And it seems like you don't either. But if you do find something, give me a call. We've been friends for a long time. And you think this is what two friends talk about on the phone? Good to hear from you, John. Take care. Okay. Yes, we'll go out here. Oh, is that a note? No, maybe not. Oh, it's a piece of like cardboard or something. Is this dude awake yet? No, yeah, still passed out. All right, fine. Actually, can we check his box? there's anything over there I mean we can check actually let's see I don't see anything the windows here they're open that's to the bathroom inside the gym I'd prefer a yellow Cadillac, but I can't complain. Okay. Uh, let's try going this way. Be crossing the street if we can again. Okay, so we can still go to the diner. Oh wait, actually. He doesn't want to say anything. All right, let's go over to the diner, see if there's possibly something there. this okay he doesn't look like a nice dude Back in ten. There's not any way to run fast or walk faster, is there? Let me check. Settings. Uh move character, zoom in, cycle through hotspots, okay, cat senses. 
Reduction, zoom out. Yeah, there's none. Okay. I keep holding shift as if it's gonna make a difference. I mean, we can talk to the dude again and see if he has anything else to tell me. Sonya apparently is just looking at that paper for two hours <laughs> and not being able to figure out anything. When that's our job in the first place, to find out the information she doesn't know, but whatever. Try talking to him again. Do you remember anything else about Joe Dunn and Buddy Yale's argument? No, not, uh, not really, no. Only Joe yelling. If you do, I'll call off the fight and kick you out of the gym. Okay. Maybe there's something in the locker room. Check his uh, thing again. Just a book and the chest thing. can open up his thing again, but I'm kind of nervous too. Alright, whatever. We have the option to. Uh. Okay. Alright. <laughs> you didn't do anything that time. Come on, man. What am I missing? So they had their exactly fight up here. Uh, something like, uh, if you do that, I'll call up the fight and make sure you never set foot in this gym again. Maybe we have to add the, the, the thing. I wanted to call off the fight. No. Tells you if there's something else going on. The card, of course. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why. Something just doesn't add up. I wish I could just ask her if they fought. Maybe we can? Did you find anything interesting in those papers? No. Investigation work takes time, as I'm 
sure you know. Of course. Can we look at any of them? I don't know where to go. Are there any papers in here? No. Any clothing to look at? No. Anything in the hallway to look at? Some of that. There's nothing on the roof. I don't think, at least. A toolbox. No indication that we can do anything with that. Wait, there's shattered glass. Right here. I don't even want to imagine weakly falling from up here. <laughs> that more shattered glass? Check over here again. Nothing. Boxes, nothing. Check these. Place to spy on Sonia. Okay. Maybe there's something over at. I mean, if we can still go over to the diner and we can't talk to either one of them, maybe there's something over there. They just don't know what. And we'll try this one more time. Try making a combination. There's no combination. Not right now. Okay. <sighs> Come on, man. Okay. Now if we just talk to him again, he's just gonna say something else. Like what they said. No, no. That towel might not be paint. It might be blood. Okay, let's try calling him. Smirnoff. 
You're gonna like what I have to tell you about the Dunn case. Ah. O'Leary is involved. I went to Yale's place and ran into O'Leary's men. They were waiting for him. Ah, well, it's only normal. They run an illegal gambling operation. If a fight's canceled, they lose money. I'd love to take a swing at O'Leary, but we can't base the case on a hunch. I'm not finished yet. You're gonna like what I have to tell you about the Dunn case. I know Dunn and the cleaning lady weren't. Jake works for O'Leary. A close friend of Dunn's works for O'Leary. You mean that gorilla? Your ex's bodyguard? We know. O'Leary is a respectable citizen. Until we prove otherwise. So there's nothing wrong with him hiring a bodyguard. I think I have a new lead on the Dunn case. I found racial slurs painted on the lockers at Dunn's gym. He was pretty open-minded about racial issues. Maybe his death had something to do with that. John, half of the crimes in this city have racial ramifications. Oh my Unless god. You have solid proof that it wasn't suicide. My hands are tied. <laughs> I think I have a new lead on the Dunn case. Dunn and the Jim's crazy. If this one is to gets get married. Great. Call Woods News. They'll know what to do with such an incredibly interesting piece of information. The combination on Dunn's safe was her birthday. He even gave her a ring. You know. Your typical suicidal bliss. Okay, I'm still not convinced, but I might have something for you. Okay. That's good. We're getting somewhere. So step one, talk to everyone. Everyone. Even if it's the phone. Is this life is often off key, like a bad song? The notes come together but feel flat, unable to create anything resembling music. And yet, ah. there are ways to string them together to create harmony, ways that are not always entirely in our hands. That's Smirnoff. I think it is. He's a German Shepherd. <laughs> That's funny. If it is. You look tired, John. Yep, it is. <laughs> I'm a cat. I can't help it. It's just the way we cats are. Well, I can't help but be glad to see you. Yep, I'm beat. I'm starving. Just got back from the annual police medical. Not only did I have to fast, but I also had to chug two enormous glasses of water. John, you all right? I've had better days, and I'll have them again, I hope. We both deserve to. The thing is, I'd love to help you out with this case, but I can't. You know I work for the state of New York. If I had any information, I couldn't share it with a private eye. Even if it was lying on top of this table. You said you were starving. Why don't you go to the counter and order something? Hmm? Yeah, sure, good idea. <laughs> if you'll excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Officer, Chief Medical Examiner, East Manhattan. Postmortem report preliminary. Case number, medical term B3. Deceased, Joseph Richard. Male, widower. Links, color dark brown. 47, 55, 163. Dunn's age, weight and height. External readings. Violent asphyxia caused by rip around the neck. The neck presented four ring shaped mark around the caused by said rope. Okay. Hmm. Swollen, slightly scraped knuckles on the subject's right hand probably caused recent trauma. So he was in a fight. Internal findings. 
No internal aut autopsy was performed since external evidence seems sufficiently conclusive. Approximately 7 p.m. October 19th, 19. Island asphyxia. From a death, suicide. Now that I think of it, I better eat at home. It's healthier. <laughs> Thanks. Truth is, John, it all seemed clear to me before, but now? Not so Please, much. Promise me you won't take the law into your own hands. Of course not. I'd like to think we're not just vigilantes. Sure, you can trust me. I give you my word. All right. In any case, keep me posted, will you? Nice. Friend, you can count on it. Take care, John. As always, Smirnoff had given me new, potentially relevant information. Not to mention second thoughts. When an old dog like him gets that serious, one must be prepared to bite. Cat and dog working together. Clues collected allow to make new deductions. That place behind the, the uh, thing is definitely going to be uh, relevant. Undyne, his knuckle just was swollen. Actually, I don't know. I don't really have anything to tie to that. Wait, how many can we make? Okay, so there's two that we can make. Let's see. That? No. Something fishy. I think that's what I just did. Try this. Light and wait. Hmm. I'll go take a look. Okay. You see, he's not tall enough. Yeah. Who's allowed? I'm much taller than Dunn, and I can barely reach the noose. There's no way Dunn hanged himself. Not on his own, at least. Huh. All right, we can make another one, or at least two more. And he had four different neck marks. Add that. Let's do. I think the first two is right. It wasn't tall enough. It had that. And who do the footprints belong to? No. What it there's one more that combines with this. Someone, wait, what? How's right. that? Dunn punched a paint can. Ah. Wasn't he calm and composed? 
after the fight. Punch the can. Must have punched the paint can. Okay. Who's collected allowed to make a new deduction? There was a fight. And I must have punched a paint can. No. Okay, maybe not. Who do they belong to? He punched the paint can. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. other one to add. I'm just doing random combinations at this point. Come on, man. There's at least one that we can do right now. Footprints. Okay. Right there. No. He wanted to call off a fight. No. He wasn't tall enough. had four different things. Uh, I don't know if you had a motive to kill Dunn, but you certainly had the murder weapon. Dunn was strangled with Yell's chest expander. The clues collect to allow a new deduction. I did it for Prince at the gym. I call it because Dunn wanted to call off the fight. Christ, did Yale kill Dunn just because he wanted to call off the fight? No way. I always knew Bobby had issues, but I never thought he'd go that far. Vincent, it's too early to say it's stacking Everything against seems him. Everything to point in that direction. I'm certain of it. But he could have been framed, couldn't he? It's possible. In any case, that doesn't change a thing. It does, actually. Now we know he didn't kill himself. My father's still dead, and you still haven't found Bobby Yale. Nothing has changed. What? We found more information. That means nothing, Sonya. Opening the safe and finding my father's will won't help us achieve anything. So please hurry. Time's wasting. Sonia's indifference never ceased to amaze me. <laughs> but most importantly, why was she suddenly defending Yale? John Blacksad? I think I owe you an apology. Oh boy. <laughs> O'Leary. Apology accepted. Apology accepted. But what exactly are you apologizing for? 
Uh, listen, I don't think my fellow workers treated you with the respect you deserve. I'm so sorry they wrinkled your suit. The thing is, uh, they didn't know we shared a common goal. <laughs> what are they doing? Bobby Yale. I want to find him and get to the bottom of this as much as you do, Mr. Black Sad. So please, kindly accept my invitation. Why not share our findings? O'Leary an ally? Yes, no. Well, I don't really have a choice, so we'll say yes. You don't mind me riding in this fancy car with a wrinkled suit, do you? Oh, I think you look mighty dapper, Mr. Black Sad. Although, if those wrinkles were to rub off on me... <laughs> I always play it nice and safe. Step in O'Leary's car of your own accord. I'm assuming they would have made us do it either way. So, there's a goat driving. Thank you, Black Sad. You won't regret this. So let's cut to the chase. I need Bobby Yale to fight Stone. There's just too much money at stake. So, I'm offering you my help to find Yale. Let's work together. What kind of help do you need? What kind of help do you need? A simple exchange of information. You're a good detective. And I, well, let's just say I have my own ways of making people talk. All right, we'll make a deal. Let's work together. I thought you'd be hard to convince that you'd appeal to the moral high ground or something. Please, hear me out. Let's say I bet a beer that we find Yale in three days, and you bet a beer that we don't. In three days, one of us has to buy the other a beer. Is that so bad? We're simply two grown men using our money and free will to conduct a small private exchange. And most importantly, we're not hurting anyone. So, yeah, I run a gambling business. What's so bad about that? Well, that's illegal. It's illegal for starters. Illegal? Let me tell you what should be illegal. The way our government is ruining America. We live in a so-called free country. A place where honest people can make a living, provided they don't hurt anybody. We're not communists. Well. At least I'm not. I would have never thought otherwise. As for me... I'm not either. Ha! Ah, well then, you see? We're all among friends. In any case, that's not my point. The government betrays our nation's values by passing communist laws that forbid an honest man like me to make a living without hurting a soul. And that, Mr. Black said, is just wrong. I'd even say it's unconstitutional. Do you get my point now? Okay, but that doesn't justify what you do for a living. Oh boy. Did you hear anything I just said? <laughs> anyway, when the government passes these laws, there's only one legitimate weapon the people can wield. The same weapon that turned America into a great nation. Civil disobedience. So. As the proud American that I am, it's my duty to disobey. Might have a point. Civil disobedience doesn't sure. tolerate. But there's no room for your ways in civil disobedience. My ways? Oh, I know what you're getting at. But what's past is past. I wasn't always a boss, you know. No, sir. I started at the bottom. When Lucky Blitzen ran the show, that good for nothing. His was a reign of terror, extortion, violence, you know, that sort of unpleasant thing. When I took over, 
I decided I'd make people want to do more. Kind of thing, bottom line, might fear, be a better placement. But out of gratitude, I decided to help people so they would help me. That beating your thugs gave me was really helpful. Thank you so much. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Those poor bastards didn't even know you were a detective, that you were on our side. Maybe at first, but when they tied me up and beat the socks off me, they knew very well who I was. Seriously? That goes against my rules. Who was it? <laughs> the two of them. Ah, uh, the buffalo. It was just Wilson. That bastard. Don't you worry, I will have a serious talk with him. I cannot tolerate this behavior. Please accept my apology, <laughs> Mr. Black Sad. As I said before, I like to help oh. people so I can count on their gratitude. That applies to fellow partners like police or, in this case, a detective. I won't deny this business has its fair amount of violence, extortion, and casualties, but I'd rather leave that to my enemies. And you are not my enemy. And, ah, it looks like we're here. Mark. Desmond O'Leary. Yell's apartment no longer guarded. Nice. <laughs> I told you, I'm a 